I'm Eric Budd, your facilitator for today, as well as the developer and lead instructor of the current IQI Academy for Leadership Fundamentals. At IQI, our mission is to inspire learning, share successes, and spark the energy and courage to lead our organizations to continually improve and innovate. We are a 30-year leader in teaching a system of profound knowledge. We have a board of directors who includes Sigrid Adams, Kathy Adcock, myself, Christopher Chapman, Frank Murdoch, Heidi Nielsen, and our chair, Terry Terry. We also have an advisory board that includes Adrian Bass, Ken Glickman, Bill Knapp, Tina Miller, Nancy Schertzing, Tammy Slavic, and Paige Thompson. The IQI Academy is one of the many programs offered by IQI. I will give you a brief overview of how the IQI Academy works, and then we will enjoy our capstone presentations. President John F. Kennedy said, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Over the years, we've observed three primary benefits for leaders and organizations who send their people to the IQI Academy. Development of leadership mindset, approaches, and skills in future leaders. Preparation and identification of people for additional leadership responsibilities. And improvement of organizational outcomes. We can ask, how does one learn to become a more effective leader of people, of processes and systems, of changes that produce improvement? And you might ask, how does one get noticed, recognized, and acknowledged as such a leader and as the leader you are and could be? Everything that matters takes place on the court. Your academy project is an excellent vehicle for this because it puts you into action immediately. It provides the sources of current knowledge to which you'll connect and better retain new knowledge. It enables the learning that only occurs when you attempt to cause change because if you want to truly understand something, try to change it. Your academy project develops the non-declarative knowledge and memories based upon experiences that cannot be taught or transferred. And it creates leadership experiences and skills resulting from producing cooperative interdependent work. The first and primary source of learning for developing leaders is your organization. Projects are selected from work processes in which each participant works and upon which they have some influence. Project selection criteria ensures successful projects. The criteria used are frequency of activity, support from others, freedom to take action, the need for IT resources, and the need or opportunity to learn. Brian Tuchelski of the Michigan Rehabilitation Services said, that even though we work remotely, our sessions include many opportunities to interact with and learn from each other. Other trainings tend not to have the same level of depth. Participants in the IQI Academy often join us believing they have neither the resources nor the time to produce worthwhile change in their organization. One of the most frequently heard reasons for not engaging in transformational or improvement activity is, I don't have enough time. Our perceptions of time are malleable and context-driven. We can spend hours on a task only to have it feel as if minutes have passed by, and the opposite can occur. Sometimes it simply requires a commitment to make something a part of your day. Waiting for the time to become available will find you waiting a very long time. 
the learning environments that we work within are nothing like the kind and predictable learning environments we experience in sports or games like chess. We work in learning environments that have been described as wicked. Learning methods that, are, that comprehend this fact are needed. The broad multidisciplinary perspectives provided by the leadership teachings of W. Edwards Deming are what is called for. All of the 14 points provide management wisdom. Participants learn, share, and evaluate how their organization's practices align with each of these points. Application of all four areas of the system of profound knowledge is integrated into weekly learning and improvement cycles. Leaders and managers from numerous industries know the beneficial effects that come from understanding and applying the system of profound knowledge. Some even go so far as to say Deming's teachings are a path to ending suffering in the workplace. The four areas of the system of profound knowledge include appreciation for a system from which we learn that effective management of a system requires knowledge of the interrelationships between all the components within the system and of the people who work in it. Understanding variation. There is valuable information to be extracted from variation. Most managers are unaware of how to perceive or make use of this information. The theory of knowledge helps us to understand that management in any form is prediction. Plans, agendas, standard work processes, and work rules are all management predictions. It is possible to perform better as a manager when you learn how to apply the theory of knowledge to your management predictions. Psychology helps us to understand people and their numerous interactions. Good management will apply an understanding of psychology to support joy in work and to nurture people's innate positive attributes. The IQI Academy is structured to introduce you to and to provide you practice in all the areas of the system of profound knowledge. During unit one, participants are introduced to the system of profound knowledge and the 14 points for management. They also begin their on the court learning experiences through weekly learning and improvement plan, do, study, act to cycles, daily teach to learn conversations and a course long theory of knowledge mind mapping activity. Our study of voice of the customer includes an introduction to the concept of the customer's job to be done as a more useful perspective than customer needs. We learn about the six voice of the customer system gaps that exist in every organization. Our exploration of participants' chain of customers provides deeper understanding of how our work fits into the products and services that the organization delivers. Learning to see the organization as interdependent elements that need to work together to successfully serve external customers leads us to focusing on how well we interact and work together rather than how well we perform independently. We learn that customers and suppliers are important parts of our system and should appear on our representations of the system. Interactions, cooperation, aim, and purpose become primary areas of management focus. We cannot become good, effective process managers until we understand variation. Each participant learns how to use data from their project to create a control chart. They then learn how to interpret and respond to the signals on their control charts. By learning to distinguish between sources of common cause and special cause variation, participants join the rare group of managers who can appropriately address variation in their systems, taking actions that produce improvement and avoid tampering. A wide range of factors, psychological and otherwise, are examined through an in-depth look at what we often describe as individual performance and performance feedback. Motivation, joy in work, fear in the workplace, stress, red beads or problems, the 90-30 rule, as well as approaches to address system and measurement issues are all integrated into each participant's idealized redesign of a performance feedback process. Our final unit focuses on the true source of transformation. The essence of this concept 
is captured in a quote from David Langford, one of our past guest instructors. He said, change starts at the top. I am the top of something. This lesson is the focus of all our work in the IQI Academy. Transformation of any kind begins with us, with how we perceive, how we think about, and how we act in the world. We begin our project work with the three basic questions. The three basic questions are designed to establish, to establish a foundation for generating tests of changes aimed at improvement, our PDSA cycles. These questions are, what are we trying to accomplish? How will we know that a change is an improvement? And what moves can we make that will result in improvement? The only source of improvement is movement. To improve something, you must move something. We practice learning how to make moves that produce improvement by completing weekly PDSA learning and improvement cycles. PDSA learning and improvement cycles are one of the three most powerful on the court learning methods used in the IQI Academy. Participants design and run at least one PDSA cycle each week with the intention of producing the learning that precedes improvement. We come to learn that at least four to five cycles are required before useful changes leading to improvement are produced. Our organizations are powerful, interconnected networks of people. In the academy, participants begin to learn ways in which they can have a positive influence on those networks. Teaching as an individual learning method is well known. It supports the learning activities of retrieval, elaboration, and practice. There's an accumulated effect that results from asking course participants to sustain a daily practice of teaching what they're learning to at least seven to 10 different individuals during each unit of the academy. After the morning session, participants teach a key topic to someone in their social or work network. They follow up by documenting what they, the academy participant, learned by teaching the concept. At the end of the academy, each person has recorded notes from close to 50 teach to learn conversations with others. They experience strengthened interpersonal relationships with coworkers. The organization's social network benefits from the new knowledge and exploration ideas occurring each day. Individuals learn and the critical mass required for organizational transformation grows. Notes from the daily conversation with another person records what was taught and what was learned by participants as they attempted to teach a single concept. Even though our current cohort is small in numbers, they have had a valuable influence in their organization. They have each held over 50 teach to learn conversations during the course of the academy with different people at different levels of the organization on important management topics, methods, and concepts. Again, although the primary purpose of teach to learn conversations is to improve learning and retention by participants, their organizational and social networks are also significantly benefiting from the knowledge that these conversations introduce into those networks. The IQI Academy is six integrated units, each consisting of eight to 10 45 minute live remotely taught weekday sessions. Most units have some pre-work assignment, including developing and updating answers to the three basic questions. There are multiple in-class exercises as well as occasional assignments that are completed with coworkers. As discussed, each participant conducts daily teach to learn conversations. Participant work projects are the basis for weekly plan, do, study, act learning cycles. Hillary Evans, one of today's presenters, says, with the knowledge I have gained from IQI, I've been able to incorporate changes into my daily work. I strive to make small improvements in order to have more joy in my work. Monica Robbins said this in her capstone presentation. Brian Chachelsky adds, the standout difference between the IQI Academy and other trainings is the amount of hands-on doing and analyzing of each step. 
And Tiffany Nguyen states that the principles and concepts she learned in the IQI Academy will probably be used throughout her career. We are fortunate to frequently have guest instructors share their knowledge and expertise with, with us. During this Academy, we enjoyed learning about motivational factors from Christopher Chapman. The updated Learn and Lead virtual series from IQI features experienced speakers and facilitators like those who have been guest instructors. After the June event, our Learn and Lead sessions will be every third Tuesday at 11 a.m. You may register today at the IQI website, qualityandinnovation.org. You may also register today for the next IQI Academy, which starts on September 12th by going to the IQI website. For the quickest responses to requests for more information, including receipt of pre course pre-work, please contact me using the information on the screen. Email me using eric at qualityandinnovation.org. For voice or text, use 248-505-0563. Our capstone presentations provide an opportunity for participants to report on how they navigated the course, what they chose to learn, and what they are committed to doing after their IQI Academy experience. This is our sequence of presenters today. First up is Ben Scroggins. Good morning, Ben. Morning. Um, so like you said, I'm Ben Scroggins. I'm one of the supervisors here at LabCorp Drug Development in Greenfield, Indiana. Um, specifically, I work in the animal house operations with oncology. So to understand what I learned about um, throughout the academy, we really need to understand the different challenges that I faced and the items that I initially resisted from the course. So my first challenge was that Eric said pretty early on that I was trying to learn and apply the BIN way and not the IQI Academy way. You know, I had habits or previous experiences that I was relying on and trying to apply to this project um, that I really had to break down and start back with fundamentals and uh, build it all back up. So there were a few times I wrote in my responses to Eric you know, I'm not sure how else to do this. And I would get overwhelmed with articles or links to resources. Um, another challenge I faced was accepting the pacing of the PDSA work, you know, having to plan a move and, and not just make progress, but a move that I can learn from each week was, was a challenge for me. Um, the things I initially resisted, so teach to learn conversations is on the list, um, sitting down and having a 15 minute conversation each day uh, about what we're learning about in class is not something I would normally do. Um, I'm a pretty busy guy, so having another daily meeting was not something I was looking forward to at all. Um, other things I resisted, the formality of the PDSA process, um, having to write everything down, sometimes took longer than the move itself for me, I uh, very much, you know, usually I have an idea that I run into the back and I, I put it into, into place and uh, having to write down predictions, you know, then turn around and write down how I study the results and what acts I'm going to take. That was something I resisted. Uh, I also resisted branching out of my chain of command. You know, when I started this course, I set a personal goal or objective to take what I learned and really apply it to my management style and impact my direct reports. So I didn't branch out of my chain of command too much. And then I also resisted the mind map, but there's a whole slide on that we can talk about later. Uh, so to really learn from the course, I had to approach with a more open mind. You know, I had to forget about those preconceived or already existing um, habits or, or knowledge that I had and really be accepting of the feedback and willing to make adjustments uh, throughout the course. You know, I had to slow down, I had to create more achievable PDSA cycles that I could actually get done. And then I really had to decide what I wanted to get out of the teach to learn conversations um, that was gonna help me in my learning and then adjust the scope uh, of the work I was doing in that direction. So requesting support from peers is something I've struggled with in the past, but bringing some other supervisors through this course for teach to learn conversations or in-class or in activities uh, really push that boundary 
and learning from others is a huge part of my job. So uh, the assignments and requirements for this course really strengthened that commitment. Uh, so this was my system diagram. Um, I really struggled with the, the layout initially because it was just so different than anything I had seen before. Uh, but thankfully, most of the class was built up with people who were doing jobs very similar to me. So through discussions in class, I went through several different drafts of this. Um, the things that stood out the most to me. Uh, well, well, first, my team sits basically in the middle there. Um, the executing oncology studies is really what we do. Uh, but when I started laying out the um, system diagram, the number of support processes that I was putting into the box right below it uh, was getting longer and longer, um, you know, with different departments, different teams, different individuals. So I basically had to shorten it to fit it into this diagram. So that was kind of uh, an insight that I gained from doing this activity that I wouldn't have had elsewhere. Um, and then when I took a step back, and I tried to look at my role kind of in management, um, I realized it didn't really sit just over my team's box, just over that middle spot, um, but it's also over the interactions that my group has with these other groups or with you know, how these groups are interacting with us. So you know, in a traditional organization chart, I wouldn't be able to see that. Uh, so next up is the customer chain. Um, for this activity, I broke down one of my responsibilities uh, to, to really focus in on it. Um, one thing that I do in my day-to-day -day work is when we get assigned a study or an experiment from a client, I'm the one deciding um, what dates we're going to run it. So when are we actually going to get it in? And then I also secure what resources we need, you know, supplies, uh, support groups, all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to look at what people down the stream need from me and, and how I can really help them. Uh, so, you know, I talked to a couple different people down the chain and I came up with this diagram here on the slide. Uh, and through these discussions, I was better, I was able to better define my role and uh, have actually reworked some of my templates. My, I adjusted some metrics and uh, refined my communication to make sure these people were getting what they needed. Uh, I also made a couple control charts through the class. Um, the first one, the one on the left, is actually the number of deviations or errors that my team uh, was, uh, errors that my team was having each month. Um, so the data goes all the way back to 2019, but right off the bat, you notice that there's a pretty large spike around May of 2021. So that was before I took the course. Um, but at that time we were able to put in some corrective and preventative actions uh, to reduce that overall number, to bring it back down closer to what we had seen historically. So when I laid all these deviations out, it was, it was pretty neat to see something I had done in the past uh, before I even saw the content of this course um, that actually uh, was applying some of the lessons that I, I, I've learned. Um, and then the second graph is an ongoing quality project I'm working on. Eric actually helped me make this graph, but I was able to take it to some meetings and presentations. And it's been very, very helpful to, to see the special causes uh, specifically. Okay, so, uh, so this is my PSA work. Um, my project's goal was pretty large. Um, it was to define the workflow for oncology lab spaces for ease of use and to allow the space to be practically used without overbooking. Um, I wanted to make sure technicians were able to find what they need when they need it without having to search. I wanted to make sure techs could reorder the same supplies or equipment each time without having to search for ordering information. I wanted to define the aim of each piece of equipment, define the aim of each lab room, and then create a sustainable cleaning schedule and procedure. So I learned a lot <laughs> through this project. Uh, first thing that came up was my scope was far too large. I was trying to take on all of our rooms at the same time. I wasn't making a whole lot of progress and it was just too much. Um, I also learned that for the physical sorting and movement of supplies, I needed a lot of help. You know, I needed the more hands I could get back there, the faster we were going. I learned that we had a ton of stuff. Our site is like 100 years old, so we had a ton of old stuff, a ton of unused stuff, uh, just taking up space, and we had not near enough of the stuff that we were using daily. Um, and then at Eric's request, I actually recruited somebody else from my organization, and I helped coach them through a PDSA cycle. Um, so this was one of the, the technicians under me. 
but I walked them through the three questions, through drafting their predictions, through recording their observations, and then I sat down with them to study the results and set what the next action could be. Um, so this really highlighted some gaps in my knowledge, it pushed me to explain each step of the process and motivated me to, to try to find a way to apply to this uh, apply DSA work to my group as a whole. Um, and was really, it, it lined up pretty well with what I was wanting to get out of this class in general. So the results of my PDSA work, um, I ended up running 10 PDSA cycles. I did have to narrow the scope down to just one room so I could actually make some progress. Uh, we threw out dumpster after dumpster of ancient equipment and floppy disks and, you know, things that were 40, 50 years old sometimes. Uh, I drafted a catalog um, of all the items that we had in, in the back, in the lab space with exactly what shelf, what drawer, um, how to reorder it, all that information. Uh, I'm about halfway done with that catalog. I also created spaghetti charts to map out where each individual was working for each um, task in the room. So that's what I have on the slide here. You can see each of those circles is a different person and there's a lot of crossover. People are in each other's way. It's very cramped, uh, all that kind of stuff for, uh, that I can see because of the spaghetti charts. I also divided the room into different areas to better assign duties. And I implemented a 5S checklist to help sustain the space. Um, so my teach learn conversations, like I said before, I, I really wanted to focus on my direct reports. Um, I haven't been in a management position for very long, so I went into this course with the goal to learn a new perspective of management. Um, because of that, I didn't meet all the requirements. I didn't branch out of the chain of command too much. I didn't go above my own level, really. Uh, again, I was really focused on, on the people that you know I was working with every day. So some useful insights that I gained. Um, through these teach learn conversations. Um, some of our metrics that I use were actually made against our real jobs to be done. Uh, Dr. Deming has a story in the new economics book um, about a woman who has a job in a call center. Uh, the objective she's given is to make 25 calls per hour, but her real job is to provide customer satisfaction. Um, so those two ideas were, were very antagonistic and you know they were just making calls and hanging up on customers and not getting really their, their job done. Uh, and I saw the same kind of thing in some of the objectives I had set for my technicians. You know, do I really need my husbandry technicians to change 100 cages an hour, or do I need them to make sure that my animals are cared for? So some lessons learned there. Uh, I also saw that some of the more repetitive roles that report up through me are highly susceptible to common cause variation, um, but I usually only focus on special cause. So I'll be applying some control charts to those, uh, those roles and those uh, tasks. I've also learned that I probably tampered with stable systems in the past. <laughs> uh, there's a good chance, but I, I didn't have the data to back it up. So I, well, I'll just live in ignorance. Um, and I probably also ignored some special causes. And then uh, those types of questions really came more readily when I was sitting down discussing these concepts with the technicians that, are, uh, that were directly impacted. So this is my mind map. Um, looks like a mess. It used to look a lot worse before I color coded it. Uh, and like I said before, initially I rejected the idea of making a mind map. It, it seemed like busy work. It wasn't until I started putting my own projects or thoughts and relating them to all of these quotes that I started to see some value in this activity. I found some connections I wasn't expecting and, and really identified two types of areas in mind map. Um, those are aspects that I've given a lot of personal thought to and have tried to apply professionally in the past, like the management is prediction area of it. And then there were also aspects that I hadn't thought about before that I can uh, continue to learn and develop by exploring, like uh, creative people simply do more experiments. So um, I'm walking away from this academy with a different perspective and some new processes. I can see myself making control charts for all sorts of issues or uh, metrics. I learned a lot about 5S projects from the resources provided by Eric for my project. Um, and probably the largest thing I learned in this course was adjusting my outlook and my focus to the system and its interactions instead of the individual pieces. Uh, so that alone is going to significantly impact future projects for me. I haven't taken a professional course like this before. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, there are a lot of assignments and the questions and prompts are simple enough to really make you think. 
Um, the closest experience I've had would be college courses, but the academy was was different in that it was a, a lot of hands-on work. It was you know full of on the court learning that I hadn't experienced before. And my personal experience with the academy was a little bit of a struggle. Uh, this course ran through some pretty busy times where I was facing new and different challenges in my career that I hadn't seen before. Um, so splitting my attention between this class and my full-time job was something I, I probably could have been better prepared for. You know, there were days I was late to class or submitting late assignments or responding to Eric's emails several days after the fact. So, um, you know, there are some learn lessons learned around time management on my side, but ultimately the topics and practices covered in the course, the discussions we've had in class and the input I've got from Eric have made this a worthwhile and valuable experience. Uh, so things I've done in the academy that I haven't done elsewhere, uh, I've never had anybody mail me a giant foam ball just to have me rip it up in the first 10 minutes of class. Uh, I've never had my own project where I've gotten so much outside input and advice. You know, any question I had or gap in my process, Eric was sending me tons of different resources and a novel and an email uh, really explaining how to improve what I was doing or examples of what he's seen in the past. Um, and then... Uh, the persona work, it was just a one day uh, kind of assignment back in the voice of the customer unit um, where we had to create personas over our clients, you know, uh, what type of people we're working with. And, and that was really unique. And I took a lot away from that. Um, I get so used to our clients just being company names that peeling back that formality to remember that there are people just trying to do the jobs on the other side, help change some of my perceptions and assumptions. Uh, so the commitments that I'm making, um, so for my learning, I'm going to reread the new economics now that I have a better understanding of exactly what it's about. And then I'm going to read one of Dr. Deming's other books, um, Out of the Crisis, to see what I can learn from it as well. Uh, for my project, uh, I did only get one room done. So my goal is going to be to complete another room every month um, until we get through them all. It's going to take me a little, little, little bit under a year, I think. Um, but a new uh, room each month with different technicians working on it. Um, I'm, I'm going to complete my catalog here in the next couple of weeks. And then for my organization, you know, what, I, what I'm going to apply to my management style. Um, I'm going to create a draft of, of a PDSA template uh, that's going to be a little simpler, a little bit shorter than the one we use in class um, and present that to my team so they can use it on projects. I'm going to take the lessons that we learned during the feedback units or, or, or uh, lectures from this class to redo my one-on-one -on -one template. And then I'm also going to perform one of the activities we did, the moving motivator activity with all of my technical staff to see you know, what I can learn from that too. Uh, so thank you everybody who's suffered through the last few months uh, teach learn conversations with me. Thank you. Our next presenter is Matt Clark. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, everyone else. <laughs> um, so like Eric said, my name is Matt Clark. I'm a research assistant uh, at LabCorp here in Ann Arbor. Um, so throughout my presentation, I'm gonna go over uh, my experiences throughout the academy. Uh, what I learned, my three basic questions for my project and how they evolved, how I made meaningful improvements, the process of learning and gaining knowledge, my teach and learns, my results so far, and finally my future commitments. Uh, so some of the main points that I took away from the academy was the different approach to management, uh, knowing my customer, my ideal field feedback approach and what the system inside my organization really looks like. Uh, so some of the challenges that I faced were uh, teaching new concepts every day um, and the uh, time commitment that was involved in the academy. Um, some of the resistance, the resistances that I had was uh, reaching out for help and the teach to learns um, with uh, teaching new concepts every day. Um, some of the responses to the challenges uh, that I had was just pushing myself and realizing that people are actually willing to help and they want to help. And then um, 
some my willingness that I've learned was uh, just the request support from others, accepting support and learning with and from others. So in the beginning of the course, we created our three basic questions to accomplish the aim of our project. Uh, my first set of questions looked bare and left a lot open to interpretation. Um, but toward the end of the course, my three basic questions were more defined and created a picture of what steps need to be taken to accomplish my aim. I will be using the three basic questions in my future projects as well. Uh, they help you focus in on what aim you're trying to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish that aim. Uh, some of the considerations that I learned for making meaningful improvements are understanding what needs to be improved and knowing your organization's system surrounding that improvement. A strategy that can be used to understand what needs to be improved is the use of control charts. Uh, so this isn't the best representation of a control chart, but the control chart essentially allows you to see what actually falls outside of normalcy. Um, knowing the difference between common cause variation and special cause variation can save a lot of time and effort when trying to make an improvement. I realized that after doing this control chart, the variation and tumor measurements weren't falling in the range of common cause very, or were they were at, falling inside the range of common cause variation and they're not special cause like I originally had thought they were. Um, some strategies for knowing your organization's system um, is to make the use of customer chain, a system diagram or flowchart. Uh, knowing your customer is really important in the improvement process. Um, a customer can be almost anybody inside your organization, not just who you are creating a product for outside of your company. Realizing my coworkers were essentially my customers was a big insight that I had to understand to make use of a good customer and see how work flows through them, throughout my system. When regarding my coworkers as customers, it helped me distinguish the different steps in my organizational system. A system diagram is also an important tool to use when looking at your system as a whole and when making improvements. You can track the steps of the system from the aim of the system all the way through the end when your product reaches the customer. The system diagram helped me distinguish the different parts of our system and who they be belong to in each chart or each part, excuse me. As I created my system diagram, I began thinking differently about who has a part in each step and who needs to be interacting with who. A replacing organizational chart with a system diagram helps with knowing who belongs where in the system instead of whom oversees whom. Uh, Flowcharts can also be valuable when looking for ways to improve a system. Here I made a simplified flow chart of our current sample validation process on the right. The flow chart on the left is my proposed electronic sample validation process. The points circled in red are the areas that I want to improve upon and the points circled in green are the improved upon part points. I removed all the steps for handling paper copies of the sample manifest with creating an electronic versions of the sample manifest for each sample day. The process of learning and gaining knowledge is through the theory of knowledge. I made use of my mind map and PDSA cycles to put forth what I learned about the theory of knowledge in my organization and my project. This was my mind map at the beginning of the course. It helped me keep track of what I was learning and my thoughts throughout the course. Eventually throughout the course, my mind map grew as my knowledge grew. So by the end, it got uh, pretty overcrowded. To me, theory of knowledge is thinking about ways of gaining knowledge and learning from that knowledge. It's hard to see, but my mind map is essentially split into categories of action, experiment, prediction, and experience. Using these aspects help develop making improvements. What I've learned about the theory of knowledge is that my organization is made up of
systems, knowing where I belong in those systems and how they connect to each other is an important piece of information to know. I ran, so I ran PDSA cycles throughout the course to keep my project moving in the direction I wanted it to go. If I had tried to complete my project all at once, it would have failed. By making small direct steps, you can stay focused on what is happening throughout the project and make adjustments accordingly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was hesitant with the teach to learns because I have had because I have a hard time asking for help. I was always thinking that I'm bothering someone when asking them to do a teach to learn with me. After going through these, I've learned that almost everybody is willing to help and my fears are not warranted. Some of the teach to learns were actually pretty deep and we had great conversations. I made mind maps for a couple of my teach to learns and they helped me stay focused and on track with the topic. For a lot of my teach to learns, I used that day's PowerPoint to help me to help guide me through the lesson and conversation. But I found by just making a simple mind map for the topic, I could easily go through the main points of the topic. Some of the steps that I've made toward my project of creating a reliable way to perform sample validation has been creating electronic sample verification SOP, creating a sampling manifest that will better suit an electronic sample verification. And I have placed a computer at the sampling station to accommodate the electronic verification process. I ran a total of nine PSAs to get these results. Not all of them were successes or real improvements, but I learned a lot from them. So some of my future um, calendar commitments are to read the new economics again. Also read a couple of other books that Eric has suggested, like the six thinking hats and brain rules. I'm going to work on final on a final version of the electronic sample validation SOP, and I'm going to revisit my lab or sample manifest again. I'm going to also teach about how managing the lab core system requires knowledge of its interactions and not a focus on individuals or departments. And I'm also going to hold a Q and A to the future IQI cohorts. Uh, so thank you, everybody, um, everyone who stuck it through all my teach to learns and gave me support along in the way. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Matt. Our next presenter is Hillary Evans. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hillary Evans, and I am a research associate at LabCorp in Ann Arbor. Today, I'll be talking about my IQI experience, focusing on what I learned, the challenges I face, and some examples of exercises from the course. I will go over the three basic questions in PDSA regarding my project, the theory of knowledge, and my commitments coming out of the course. I chose to experience IQI and put my best effort into learning. I have not been through a developmental course before, so these concepts were all new to me, as was this experience. Throughout IQI, I added to my mind map using quotes from each session. Although this is not a pretty representation, but this was a way for me to apply the knowledge that I gained from each session. After each session, I was able to reflect and add to my mind map based on what I learned. By brainstorming and structuring the ideas I generated, it allowed me to retain what I learned. This was a good visual representation of what I learned and it gave me the opportunity to see how some of these ideas were interconnected. As this was built over time, I noticed more and more interconnections between each topic. The theory of knowledge is basically a web of interconnected pieces of knowledge and is limitless on how large it can become. So what I resisted, making a change, and by that I mean in terms of what do I change? What do I have the authority to change? What difference could I make? These were questions that I asked myself as I was brainstorming project ideas for IQI. I was hesitant to choose a project since I was not sure what impact I could actually make. At the beginning, I really resisted having the daily teach to learn conversations. First of all, I felt that I would be intrusive on others and their time. 
I'm a quiet person and having these conversations with so many different people was out of my comfort zone, especially when trying to talk about topics that are new or a different way of thinking and have and something I may not completely even understand. I also resisted completing the exercises. The exercises were intended for me to open my mind and train myself to think in a different way. And I had to be willing to put in extra effort to completing them in order to practice these concepts. To, firm, to further my learning and have a more open view, my Teach to Learn partners were utilized to help contribute to these exercises. What challenged me? Coming into the course, I had no idea what I would learn, the challenges I would face, or the large commitment that was expected of me. My initial expectations were thought to be involved during each session and have some occasional exercises. I had no idea this would be so involved and be such a large time commitment. This was especially challenging for me, not only because I had personal things I was dealing with, but handling my workload as well. Time management, right from the beginning, I realized I had to schedule my time very carefully in order to complete the assignments, conduct daily teach to learn conversations, and maintain my workload. I struggled with asking for help, but I learned that I needed to rely heavily on my team so I could dedicate more time toward IQI so I could get the most out of it. All throughout IQI, it was challenging to apply these new concepts to my project as I had to really stretch my way of thinking. I used some of the teach to learn conversations to pick other people's brains in order to help me generate ideas. After returning to IQI due to a requested leave of absence, it was even more challenging to complete the expected assignments. However, I started out using my team and others right from the beginning of my return. My willingness to request support from others evolved over time. I learned this by scheduling my daily teach to learn conversations, asking for help with my PDSA for my project and help with my workload. Asking for help is not the most comfortable thing for me to do, but I gained confidence in this area as I received great support from my team and others. My willingness to accept support from others, I quickly learned that I was not going to be successful through IQI if I did not accept support. Knowing that others were so willing to provide whatever support I needed allowed me to focus on IQI so I could enhance my learning, gave me peace of mind. My willingness to learn with and from others, I really enjoy doing this, I learn from others. I ask questions to learn, perhaps I even ask too many questions. By asking questions, not only do I learn, but we learn together. A deployment flow chart was created to show that um, what happens within the process and who is involved. This flow chart was used to provide a visual representation in order to understand the process of my project and to determine potential moves that could be made to make an improvement. The flow chart changed as shown as my project progressed and new tools were integrated into the process. Over the course of IQI, I updated the three basic questions about my project. These questions changed over time as I learned how to ask better questions that related to my project. The most challenging question for me was the first one. What were we trying to accomplish? Although the question seemed like a simple one, I had to truly understand what I was trying to improve and what I could do to try to accomplish it. I learned to avoid the off-limit words in order to measure if a testable change is an improvement or not and determine what moves I think would make an improvement. From these questions, I conducted several PDSAs making testable predictions. The predictions evolved as I learned through each of my PDSAs. One of my early PDSAs, I learned that my ideas for improvement may not always be useful for the entire team. For example, I made a study checklist to keep track of the study progress. It was implemented, but not everyone will use it. Many of my PDSAs involve formulas within an Excel file used specifically for the flow cytometry team for client studies. Each of these were tested by another team member. 
I learned that it's not necessarily the formula itself that needs to be tested, but there could be other observations or suggestions that could be gained by having someone else perform the test rather than doing it myself. Could there be a better way to perform the calculations? Is it necessary or is it helpful? Are all the pieces considered? Those sorts of things. The PDSA plan pictured here was one specifically where I learned from my colleague some improvements that could be made to the formulas that were being tested. Through conducting several PDSAs to test my predictions, I learned that I gained more knowledge by asking the team about my ideas first. Each PDSA I learned from the previous one throughout my project. Ultimately, my project had to change since my learning became limited. Although I initially resisted the teach to learns, I, as I previously mentioned, I enjoyed learning from my peers and family. My teach to learn conversations changed into more of discussions rather than just me fumbling through a newly taught concept. I used these conversations as a time to ask questions about how they understood or viewed the concept. Some of them, I even worked through some of the exercises by doing this, I was able to gain even more perspective of the concepts I was trying to teach and ultimately learn. As I previously mentioned, my project had to change. Based on several teach to learn conversations, I had learned that several teams within the in vitro services group were experiencing similar concerns that my team was facing. I decided I would use this as an opportunity to broaden the scope of my project and involve other departments. Additionally, after returning to IQI, I used my teach to learn conversations to complete daily assignments. This allowed me to gain different view and provide a different way of learning. One of the exercises I uh, was used to complete a customer chain. Naturally, my in initial reaction when hearing the term customer, I thought about our client. However, a customer can be anyone within the process and has a different job to be done. Understanding who our customer is, their interactions and job to be done are all vital to understanding the system. Each of these customers rely on communication to produce an output to the client. Variation exists everywhere. Control charts are a good way to plot data over time to determine common or special causes of variation. Using control charts to determine the cause of variation and how it affected the system was probably my favorite topics of discussion. The reason being that by being able to determine what types of variation exist within a system and how to make improvements to reduce them would be beneficial to our processes. This ultimately led to replacing the yellow laser on our instrument due to decline. This is a system diagram of the Ann Arbor site from my perspective. I learned that without an aim, there is no system. Each component within that system is working toward the same aim. It is not each component individually, but their interactions that contribute to accomplishing that aim. This was a good way for me to take a look at the company to determine how each component fits into the system. Without each of the components, the system would not exist as they are all contributors. The organization struggles with some of these interactions causing problems meeting the aim. The results that I produced are better questions to ask. Using questions to come up with new questions and using those to test through a PDSA. PDSAs are not about proving my predictions were right, but to learn something about the process and strategize next steps. My project resulted in an updated flow cytometry protocol that includes additional calculators, smart functions for standard panel selection, and antibody reagent volume calculator for study usage. The teach to learn conversations were intended for me to learn, but it's my hope that my colleagues took away something from our discussions as well. While creating my guest list for this capstone presentation, I learned that you all are a huge part of my IQI Academy experience. I would like to formally thank each of you who, who participated with me in my teach to learn conversations throughout the Academy. Also, thank you for your contributions to my PDSA work. I have learned much from each of you. 
when inviting you to attend this. I assumed everyone would be too busy and not have time to attend this as it is a big time commitment. I'm overwhelmed by your support and I appreciate you all for that. Thank you for joining me um, today to support me. I previously set commitments and dates in order for me to continue learning. I signed up for some developmental courses on learning path. Some of my commitments were not met and others were since I was in IQI previously. The completed com commitments were either already in the works, such as the RCA team, or had calendar appointments to keep my commitments made. For the commitments that I did not keep, there were no structures put in place for me to meet them. My project had been on hold due to capacity limitations and there were no structures put in place to improve. My learning path courses were added to my 2022 20, goals to complete this year. Coming back to IQI was a bit different than my previous experience. I came back and utilized my team and colleagues from the start knowing that I could not make the commitments on my own. Although I still had some resistance due to the capacity limitations, since I had gained more responsibility since I was first in IQI. With the knowledge I gained from IQI, I have been able to incorporate changes into my daily work. To, I strive to make small improvements in order to have more joy in my work. Thank you all for listening to my presentation. Thank you, Eric, and all the guest instructors in the Academy. Thank you to all my classmates and other participants for your contribution to my learning. Well, thank you very much, Hillary. Our next presenter is Andrea McMichael. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. Thanks everyone for coming to the presentations. So for my first slide, I wanted to go over one of the important concepts that we examined in the course which was the customer chain at our own company. Um, by creating this flowchart, I learned that we can be customers to other departments within our own company and that external clients are not the sole customer in our business. I also learned to broaden my scope and to consider how other departments play their role in the overall process of delivering reports to our clients. There are many people involved that are key to our success and it's important that we don't get lost in our own day-to-day -day duties because all of us are involved. It's a collaborative process that requires all of us to work together and understand our own roles along the pipeline. Another important concept we learned about during our topic of variation was the control charting. One of my roles as a member of the equipment team at work is to ensure that we order proper lab equipment, replace broken lab equipment, and respond to tickets promptly. This ensures that all technicians can complete their daily data collection and all work efficiently and accurately. In this unit, we learned about how control charts can be used to understand and track our processes. I made a control chart to look at the variability of the number of equipment tickets, also known as requests, that we receive on our team. This gave us valuable insight because we were able to conclude that our outlier point, circled above, was due to the budget. Some requests for new pricey equipment had been pushed to the end of the month, so we suddenly had more than normal requests that day. This allowed us to see why we were receiving so many requests that day and that broken equipment was not always the reason. Often budget timing was a factor that we can now consider for the future. Looking at our system diagram from my perspective, I learned that this is not our common ten tendency, um, but it's necessary for understanding how we work together and achieve our goals as a company. It's easy to think that the company is only in terms of what we do personally, but not in the larger sense. For instance, I found it difficult at first to list all of our suppliers and our procurement processes because I am not very involved in those. They are clearly an integral part of our company's function and it showed me that making isolated changes without considering downstream effects to other parts of the company can often prove less beneficial than intended because we are all connected and need to consider our own company as an integral. Moving right along, 
to my own project during this IQI Academy. We performed a lot of PDSA cycles to test moves for our project and to assess how our improvements were being made. One notable PDSA cycle that I ran was testing out the addition of labels to our stock shelf of equipment. My goal for my project was to make equipment available when needed without travel. During this PDSA cycle, we learned that adding labels to our stock shelves of the equipment resulted in a decrease in time spent searching for the equipment items, down from the original five to 10 minutes down to one to two minutes, which was a significant improvement. This showed us that taking the time to make small changes can really help the efficiency of our team. We started off as a small equipment team with little guidance and not very many resources, and we've made many strides by analyzing how we operate and how we store and order our items. While this PDSA showed very useful results and significant improvement, many others that I ran did not provide a ton of useful data, as so I thought, because they included creating a comprehensive list of equipment and many other kind of intermediate steps that didn't result in a decrease or anything like that. And I found it hard to add these to my PDSA cycles because they didn't seem like they were doing anything, but they helped create improvements down the line. Another result of our PDSA cycles was a flowchart that I created. Before IQI, we did not have a documented flowchart process for how we order equipment on our team. This will likely have further edits in the future as we continue to establish our own equipment team and as we continue to track how the current process is operating. After running many PDSA cycles, we're considering that it would be useful to combine, to combine a certain approval step circled above and that we can include approval of different items altogether. We also believe it would be beneficial to add a step to indicate our new labeling system for broken equipment where we add tags to the equipment specifically. So overall, we're glad to have a new process flowchart that we can utilize in the future. During this academy, I found it very difficult to add to the mind map, but as you can see by the end, it was very full. <laughs> Um, it became easier as I went through, and I found that I could make multiple additions to the map each day to various sections, and I even found ways to connect sections of the map that I didn't see at the beginning. By the end, I often added quotes to multiple sections because they were relevant to many areas. One of my favorite quotes from the Academy was, the, conf the confidence people have in their beliefs is not a measure of the quality of evidence. I learned that the theory of knowledge encompasses all the ways in which we accumulate knowledge, including prediction, experience, experimentation, and education, and that we must be mindful of what type of no what each type of knowledge can tell us. We often think an idea will be perfect and overestimate its usefulness, don't test it, and then just put it into practice. We could learn a lot more from making predictions, performing tests about our ideas, reflecting upon the outcomes of the data, and then sharing it with others. I also learned that it's a common tendency to attribute our own wins and losses as a company to the people involved when in fact, the system we operate under is often responsible. Overall, there are many ways to gain knowledge and I learned a lot and that the theory of knowledge is about being open to new ways of thinking and new ways of interpreting our data. Moving on to my three basic questions for my project. We reevaluated these um, at the beginning of each unit of the IQI Academy to determine if they were capturing our project and how we were measuring our improvement. At the beginning of the course, I really just wanted to create an inventory tracking log, but that wasn't really, that was just an implementation and it wasn't something that I could really learn from. Um, and I often changed it and and it became a lot more clear that making small moves to test an overall goal was how we were gonna create success. My mindset at the beginning really changed and the three basic questions were a good guide and I have a lot more tests to run 
but I wasn't able to run during the academy. Even though I wasn't able to complete all the PDSA cycles and ideas of improvements through the PDSA cycles. One thing that I had touched on previously was that I had to run a lot of PDSA cycles that seemed intermediate and not very important. One was creating a comprehensive equipment list that included all of the equipment that we needed to have stocked on our shelves at one time. While this didn't decrease the amount of time it took us to find our equipment, or to complete our equipment request directly, it helped us to stock our shelves properly so that in the future, improvements can be made. You can go to the next slide. So throughout this process, we produced a lot of results, namely an inventory list, an inventory tracking document, shelf labels for our stock equipment. We've moved all of our equipment to one stock location and we now have an ordering process flowchart to guide how we will order equipment in the future. All of these items have decreased time spent locating items and have made equipment more readily available when needed, which has achieved our goal in a lot of ways. Overall in the IQI Academy, I learned many things and I had to do a lot of self-reflection. We ran many PDSA cycles. I had to break through personal comfort zones and my tendencies to not want to engage with much more of the company than my own team. And I had to focus on what I learned in the, my Teach to Learns, not just on what I taught others, but what I reflected on for myself and my own learning process. For, for the future, I have many on the, my calendar commitments and things that I would like to do for my own learning, my project, and my organization. For my own learning, I'd like to read a psychology book that sparked my interest when we completed the psychology unit of this course. I plan to discuss the chapters weekly with Morgan and go through the book to make sure that I have it completed by the end of June. I would also like to add the, the book to the company learning library to encourage others to learn from this book as well. For my project, I'd like to complete future PDSA cycles, including testing out our inventory tracking document that has been tested and overall hitting more of my goals from my three basic questions that I did not have time to complete during the academy. For my organization, I'd like to pose an idea for a better feedback system with my own manager and talk about the moving motivators and fears and work with my manager. I'm excited to work on these future learning opportunities and I'm very thankful for everyone in the academy and everyone at my company who helped me because I wouldn't have been able to get through this without you. So thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. And thank you very much again, Ben, Matt, Hillary, and Andrea. I acknowledge you for completing a rigorous and demanding course. I also acknowledge you for the growth and development that you've generated for yourselves during this academy. And thank you very much for the contributions that you have made and that you will continue to make in the future. Again, thank you to each of our presenters today. At the beginning of our session, I asked, how does one learn to become a more effective leader of people, of processes and systems, of changes that produce quality improvements? This morning, we've had an opportunity to see and hear demonstrations of how our academy participants have become more effective leaders. One of the best ways to learn leadership is to lead. One of the best ways to develop future leaders is to give people opportunities to lead. Small scale improvement projects are proven methods of identifying and developing the leadership capabilities of people at all levels of your organization. Dr. Deming was a lifelong learner. I watched him make notes to himself about things he was learning as he taught his own four day seminars. He continued to learn until his final days. When we learn, we become a beginner again. I thank each one of you 
and each one of our presenters today for putting themselves into the role of a beginner throughout the duration of this academy. I commend their commitments to continuing to be learners and to making a difference in their organizations. I highly recommend that you commit to becoming a beginner again and join us September 12th for the next IQI Academy. Take that next step and register today. You may register at the IQI Academy website at qualityinnovation.org. And thank you all for supporting your friends and work associates. Thank you for joining us today. And I will see you at the next event.